Hey, what's going on? It's Gabe Monroy with Nerd Tech, and I'm talking to you about some more advanced things with Air AI and how I integrate it with GHL, which is the absolute best way to use Air AI. I'm going to deep dive one of my uh, workflows called post call outcome data. Now, there's two things you have to integrate with GHL in order to make it work, and that is the post call, call outcome data and then you need some sort of a trigger. So every script you make is the call trigger. So we make a call trigger that triggers the call connected to that script. Then anytime a call is answered, doesn't matter if it's inbound or outbound, the answered call is the post call outcome data. This is the most complex flow because this is getting all the data from the call and matching it up to the contact. So I just wanted to go in here, deep dive it, so you guys really understood what I do to get this all set up. All right, so the post call outcome data starts with a webhook. This webhook is a connection to Air. We take this uh, URL and we connect it to Air AI, and then we do a test call and do the connection. I'm not gonna show that part of it. I have other videos that show that, but rather I'm just deep diving um, each step that I do to lay out my specific workflow here. So uh, moving on, we have a split here. This is an if else action inside of uh, GHL and it basically just branches things with logical conditioning. And what we're doing here is we're taking the data from the inbound call trigger and saying, what direction is this call? Is it an outbound call or is it an inbound call? Why is that important? Because we're trying to match up the contact with uh, the data of this call. So for instance, if the contact's already in our system, then it's, uh, and it's an outbound call, then we're calling to that contact and we wanna take all of this call data, what you're looking at is the call URL, the, uh, the transcript, the notes, the outcome, the, uh, the URL, this is the recording and the uh, duration, uh, those types of things. And we want to put it on the context so you can see all that stuff, what, what happened on the call. So if it's an outbound call, we're mapping it to the two phone number. So it's going to look up this number. It's going to say, can I find this number on a contact in the system? If the answer is yes, then map all this data to the contact. If it is a inbound call, then it's not going to be the two number. It's somebody's calling us. So that would be the from number. So the reason this is important is, is because I have to determine, is this an inbound or an outbound? What's the phone number? Can we find the contact? And now we got to match up all the data on the contact. So now that we've figured out inbound uh, or outbound, we match it. So we match it based on the phone number. So both of these two contacts have the phone number. And the only difference is in the webhook here, we're matching it to the from number on the inbound. And in this one, we're matching it to the two number on the outbound. All the rest of these fields are the same in both. All we're doing is mapping the data from the webhook to these custom fields that I've created so that we can keep track of all that stuff. And then after that, we're coming down and then everything's staying the same. Once we've determined which contact we're mapping the data to, we're coming down the same line and we're gonna do the same from here on forward. So uh, this go to is just an action where it says, hey, uh, if you're going down this route, then we're gonna jump back over here so we can go down the same line. So after we're going down the same line, we're going to put uh, all the call details in a note on the context notes so that we can have it there. Uh, it makes it really easy to be able to view that quickly. Then we're going to tag the contact with this tag called AI call needs verified. Um, you can use needs verified, needs reviewed, anything like that. What I use this tag for is just an overall arching tag that says, hey, the contact has answered the phone. And then I can go into my contacts and make a, what they call a smart list. A smart list is just a saved filtered view of a type of contact. We save a list of all the contacts that have this tag. And then I can have my VA or my assistant go through and review all those calls to make sure they were dispositioned correctly. And then if they are dispositioned correctly, then she'll just check off the tag and then it will remove that contact out of that saved view and she knows that she's accomplished all of the uh, verifying all the calls for the day. Uh, what do I mean by verifying the disposition is correct? That are these call outcomes down here. These are created inside of air 
And occasionally, since it's AI and technology, for instance, somebody would say, um, you know, maybe somebody would say, I'm not quite ready, call me in a month. Maybe the AI would take that as not interested and it would label it as that. Well, that'd be detrimental. We definitely want to call this lead back in a month. So it would be a follow up, not a not interested. So that's why I have all my calls reviewed just to make sure that uh, nothing went wrong there on the way that it's dispositioning. Um, after I have at that tag, we do a math operation. I have a custom field called call pickups. This is a number field. When you create it, uh, it's uh, blank. We don't put anything there. The only thing we use it for is for right here. Every time a call is answered, we add the value of plus one to the field and then update that field. Uh, this is just simply a counter so that we can keep track of all the calls that were answered. I do the exact same thing in the other workflow when the call is triggered. That one is called call attempts and we keep track of our call attempts and our call pickups. Really cool metric to be able to see how many times you've called people just so you don't waste your time calling them hundreds of times if uh, they don't ever answer. And likely, chances are, if you've called them 10 times or more, uh, it could be a dead phone out of service or no longer a lead anymore. Maybe it came from spam. We get lots of spam calls from Facebook or Google ads, and so we just don't want to call them forever. Moving on down, we have another math operation where we take the uh, call duration. Uh, the call duration comes in from the webhook up here. And if we look at the call duration, it says 23, that is seconds. So it always comes in as seconds. And so this math operation just converts that to minutes. We divide it by 60 and then we update the field so that when all of this stuff happens within a blink of an eye and once we get to the contact to review it, we'll be able to see how many minutes was that call. If it was a long call, it would say like 5,000 seconds. Nobody wants to see that type of stuff. So then the very last thing we do is we have a logical branch again, an if else branch that just tells us what was the outcome of this call. And so all of these outcomes are simply just matched to whatever your outcomes are in air.ai. If you go to your air.ai and you click into one of your agents or your scripts on the left-hand side, there's, uh, there will be a menu and one of the menu items says set up stats tracking. Setup stats tracking is where you change your outcomes. You can create new outcomes. And these outcomes, when you go to your air.ai, they're just populated based off of a prompt. So you're just gonna tell the AI, if the prospect says not interested, then make it the not interested outcome. When you first set up your air.ai agent, it only comes with booked appointment, follow-up, and DNC. So everything else I have in here, no information, not interested, wrong number are simply just custom ones that I've created. And then I bring them into here. The outcome comes from the webhook. So again, if we go back up to the webhook, we can see we have uh, outcome right here. So this particular test call was a follow-up. So it would have gone down this branch right here. And this just says if outcome from the webhook contains the word booked appointment or follow-up or no information. So it just has every possible option. Then it tells it what to do next. So what we're doing is we're tagging it so that way we can segregate our contacts and maybe another sort of uh, save list or filtered uh, view that we want to be able to see. And we're putting all these contacts in the buckets based on tags and what happened to them. And then maybe we want to make another call to our follow ups. Then we can go and find all of our follow ups based on that tag and trigger another call. Or especially for our DNCs, we can tag it and enable the DND feature to make sure we don't ever call them again. Um, and then the not interested in wrong numbers. Um, obviously, we never want to call the wrong numbers again or not interested. Uh, sometimes people call those in six months or a year just to check because if they're not super angry, why not call them again? You know, people change their mind. So, and then uh, we have an action here that just removes them from workflows. That's just removing them from the call, uh, initial call trigger workflow so that they don't go back in there again. And that pretty much it walks through the entire post call outcome uh, web or uh, uh, flow that I have here. You only need one of these for any of your call triggers. Every single call that's made from air will come through this call outcome flow. You don't need to make more of these. Uh, the only thing that you would make more of 
would be the call triggers. But when the call's answered, um, all the calls will come here because we pretty much want to know the same thing about every call. We want a, the transcript, we want the recording, we want the, um, all the call details to go to the contact. So that all st stays the same. If for some reason you have multiple agents set up and you need different call outcomes per different agent, um, that gets a little bit more complicated and I'd, I'd be happy to help, but essentially we would just add a, an extra step in here uh, that would be a logic branch that says, if it's this script, go here, if it's this script, go here, and then they would each have their own uh, tree and we would decide which script to go to based on the uh, prompt ID right here. Every script has their own ID, so we could create a logic tree based off of uh, the ID of the script. And you can always get your ID of the script by looking at the URL in air.ai when that script is open and you'll know what that ID is to be able to tell this what branch to go down. So that starts to get a lot more advanced. I'd be happy to help out with that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you haven't. I love making this content for you guys. I hope it's valuable. And uh, let me know if you have any feedback or if you have any other better flow that uh, you think I should adopt as well. Like hearing your guys' feedback. Thanks.